Okay, and so he's, again, like I said, he's really defining democracy against aristocracy and monarchy, uh, and it's a, a version of democracy that's, you know, middle class, the bourgeois, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, landed gentry type thing, you know, intellectual. Uh, so it's a very limited view of democracy in that sense, and that leads to a lot, a lot of blind spots that we're going to see with Locke, and which in which in, in which Locke has been challenged over the years. So he's going to begin um, with the state of nature argument. So this is uh, of the times. Uh, Hobbes had preceded him with this state of nature argument. Rousseau will make a state of nature of argument, and basically, all philosophers are making some state of nature argument. I would say that all people every single day are making a state of nature argument. So how often do you hear in the course of an everyday conversation someone say, well, it's only human nature, right? So everyone seems to have a claim on human nature, but no one knows what it is. And we don't know what it is because we're not gods. You know, we can't see what our nature is. We can't go back to our primordial cells when you know, we were first coming out of the primordial goo or being civilized, etc., and see, you know, what this innate nature sort of might be. So it's always speculative. But in terms of making an argument, it's crucial, okay? So everyone is always making a state of nature argument. Which side are you on? So he's going to make this state of nature argument where he's speculating that in the state of nature, these things exist. And he's going to uh, mention natural rights which exist. He's going to mention a type of social contract that exists in the state of nature, right? So, bef again, the state of nature, before we're civilized, right, these things are there, right? So it's crucial for him to do that in order to justify democracy as a natural and not artificial um, uh, you know, apparatus that can be uh, used for human governance. And so the state of nature argument, it's this theoretical move here, it's an idealization, right? And we want to look closely at it. Then we'll go over the state of war. He goes over slavery, uh, and slavery doesn't spend a lot of time on. He doesn't mention anything about American slavery, okay? And so slavery to him is a type of you know, theoretical concept uh, that happens in which anyone under a monarchy is being enslaved in some ways.